People often sign contracts without carefully reading them. But whether or not people read them, they're often bound by their terms. A litigant's failure to comply with the terms of a contract cost one party a lot of money in Jones v. Warmack. Richard Warmack assigned his interest in two land purchase contracts to T. Michael Jones for $14 million. Their agreement required Jones to make three earnest money deposits on specified dates. Jones made the first two deposits on time, totaling $200,000. The agreement provided that once Warmack provided evidence of title, Jones had 15 days to deliver written notice of any defects in that title. Thereafter, Warmack had 10 days to cure all title defects. Warmack could choose not to cure any incurable defects. And if incurable defects were found, the contract further gave Jones 10 days to either terminate the agreement or accept title with the defects. The agreement further stated that if one party breached or defaulted, the other party was entitled to the earnest money deposits. On January 25, 2005, Warmack provided a title commitment. On January 26, Jones provided a list of nine title defects. On February 3, Warmack responded that some of the defects could be cured at closing, but some defects were incurable. Warmack's response reminded Jones that he had 10 days to decide whether to accept the title or terminate the agreement. Jones's third earnest money deposit payment was due February 8, during the 10-day period. Jones didn't make the payment. On February 11, Warmack notified Jones that the missing payment meant Jones was in default. Warmack declared the agreement terminated and announced he was keeping the $200,000 in earnest money deposits. Later the same day, Jones wrote to Warmack that Jones didn't accept the title and was canceling the agreement. Jones demanded his deposits back because his cancellation occurred within the 10-day period. Jones sued Warmack in state court, seeking a declaratory judgment that Jones was entitled to his deposits back. The trial court held that Warmack was entitled to keep the earnest money deposits. Jones appealed to the Florida Court of Appeal.